let's play a game. It's called What the Heck Happened to My Simple Program. So just to review, this is uh, a program to calculate the electric field due to a charge ring. So here I just have, I broke my ring into eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what I do is, let me just go through the code real quick. I uh, find the charge of each piece, the total charge of the ring divided by the number of pieces. And then I find the vector from each piece to where I want to find the electric field. And then I calculate the electric field to that point charge, add all up, boom, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, and and it works right because and then I print the theoretical so if I if you look down here if I look at that so here's my calculated electric field so zero in the x direction this is the z direction I didn't put the electric field there I didn't draw the arrow and then the y directions tiny 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 and then I get 9.65 times 10 to the seventh in the z direction and then the theoretical using calculus is 9.65 times 10 to the seventh so everything's Everything's pretty good, right? Everything's pretty good. Why is that? Okay, but then I said, well, if you, what happens is you increase the number. So let's go to 10, 10 pieces. Okay, looks better. Okay, everything's good. That's still really small. These are both basically zero. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's kind of high. Let's see, let's put this at, I'll put the charge at, six let's put it at six no let's see it like that that's fine um but what happens if we go like a hundred should even be even better right a hundred pieces there i'm not going to count them but i bet that's a hundred objects and here you see there's my theoretical there's my z component but look right here what the heck my x component is not anywhere near zero and i don't know why okay so my first thought was that i'm not counting correctly so what i do is but i did count eight right so if i let's put this at nine nine charges let's see if i have nine okay i always start right here one two three four five six seven eight nine so that's right because the thing i was thinking about was that maybe i'm doubling up right here maybe i am doubling up no wouldn't that's not it can't be because then i would have a definite uh negative x component even in this situation whereas right here oh I, if i run it at zero and zero so it's fine right you would think it'd be very very pronounced i'm not sure what's going on okay let's run some tests number one i don't care about displaying it so let's just not draw this sphere so the way I did the program was, let me go over it. This is called the rubber duck method of problem of debugging. This is a banana duck. I don't know where it came from. I mean, I know where it came from. My, my younger son, who's not young, uh, wanted my older daughter, who's an, who's an artist, to create a 3D file, and I think she just said, make a banana duck. So she made this banana duck, and she sent me the file, She uh, and then I 3D printed it, so that's a banana duck. So I'm gonna talk to the banana duck. Okay, hello, banana duck. These are all my constants right here, uh, break it into pieces, the charge per piece. Uh, and then what I do is I calculate theta, and I, I find my position, and then I increase my value of theta and plot a new position. So I go around and find all those vector positions in the xy plane. Uh, so my step size, my theta step size is 2 pi divided by n. Is that, that's right, right? Because I draw the things and it works. Uh, and so this is going through as long as theta is less than 2 pi, but not equal to 2 pi. Um, so this calculates that vector, cosine theta, sine theta zero, that's true. The r vector is from the observation location, which is right here on the z-axis, uh, minus that temporary vector. And then there's my electric field, add to there, and it should work fine. Let's add up the charge. Okay, so I have the total charge of 6 times 10 to the negative 6. Let's just check. So I'm up here, I'm going to say QT is 0, and then I'm going to add QT 
equals qt plus dq, right? So then it should e equal the, the final charge. And let's print both of those. Print uh, q and print qt. Let's see, qt. QT. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so that works. So it's not, I'm not adding an extra charge. I'm pretty sure I'm not adding an extra charge. So I'm going to delete that part. I don't think that's it. The other thing I'm thinking about is when does, when does the charge, when does the electric field start increasing that X value? And so I could run this a whole bunch of times, but instead what I'm going to do is make a function. And my function is only going to be a function of N. Right, I'm going to plot the electric field as a function of n. So let's define this, and this is a not very great way to make functions, but I'm going to call this def e calc, and I'm just going to pass it in a number. And then once I do that, I'm going to put this in here. Uh, and I need to put this in here and that in there. No, not that. This. So in my function, and then this is all going to be part of my function. So I'm going to tab that in. Okay. So there's my my initial temper. Temp. We'll call that. No, I think it's okay calling it e. Dq. This is going to be in t. Uh, I need my theta in here. Theta equals zero. D theta equals uh, two times pi divided by n t. So that's gone. Don't need that. And those are things I'm going to reset every time I run the function, right? They depend on n. While theta is less than 2 pi, that's fine. RT, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And then I'm just going to return E. So let's just uh, try this. I'm going to run print E. Let's call this E8. We know that one works, right? So it's going to be E calc 8. And then that's fine. That's fine. This is not fine because I didn't do those. So we already know that works. All I did was put it in a function. Let's see if it actually does work. Okay. So that works. So now I can run that function multiple times for different values of n and see what happens. I'm going to plot the x component as a function of n. That's what I'm going to do. So let's make a graph. g1 equals graph. Uh, let's just put x title equals n, y title equals e x in newton per coulomb. Um, I guess I should do this. This width equals 400, height equals 200. Otherwise, it, it doesn't show up very well. Now I need something to plot. F1 equals g curve. Color equals color dot blue uh, so there's my function so I can just use that so let's start off with I don't let's comment out all this stuff so in in WebVPython you can comment with three uh, quotes like that you know comment out that section uh, I'm gonna say n equals one no I'm gonna start off with n equals uh, five and then while n is less than a hundred because we, we know it, it breaks at a hundred uh, do the following. Number one, I want to, I'm just going to go ahead and plot n versus e. So f1.plot uh, n and then e calc n. And so that's the nice thing about making these functions, right? I can make that function and just plug it right in that plotter thing. And so it's going to, it's going to run, it's going to calc it in, it's going to return the vector value. But I don't, I can't because that's a vector. So that's going to return a vector. I only want the x component, so dot x. Now I'm going to add one to my value of n n equals n plus 1. Otherwise, the loop will go on forever. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, it worked. Okay. So, this is interesting. So, right over here at n equals 6. n equals 6, it's wrong. And then it gets wronger and wronger and wronger. But then sometimes it's right. See, hmm. I think it's a counting issue. It has, it's got to be a counting issue, right? It's got to be a situation where uh, a mass doesn't count, cancel later on. And so over here, I'm getting 10 to the fifth, 
Still, it's really huge. I guess it's not that big. I think it's just a counting error. Let's look at um, 10 to the sixth. So, or six, six ones. Mm, I want to print it now, but I don't. Mm, let's do this. Okay, get rid of this. Comment, comment, comment. I'm going to put a sphere. I'm going to make a sphere here. Position equals RT, uh, radius equals R over 20. So the function can make those spheres. And let's just run, uh, let's, I'm going to print E calc 6. Let's see what happens. Because we know that's the worst value. Okay, so there's my six values. And you see here, it does give me a terrible X component. Um, y, oops, I zoomed into it. Why is that? So if I'm on the z-axis right here, that is in the x direction. That's in the x direction. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why would they not cancel? This looks uniform. It looks perfect. Oh, pi. Something about theta. Let's try this. One more thing, and then I'm going to just not worry about it. Um, print RT. So I'm going to go around and print all those vectors too, so I can see the vector locations of them. Okay, so there's that. I'll let it zoom down. Okay, so here's all my vector locations. Uh, that one's right, and then the next one has an x value, a y value, x value is the same, y value is the same, that's right. Uh, then on the other side, it's not a zero y value, but that's okay. It's just 10 to the negative 18, that's zero, right? So that matches up. And then I have negative 5.3, uh, that matches up. I don't know what the problem is. What is the problem? Hmm, what is the problem? Why is that giving me so bad of an answer? What did it give me? 10 to the sixth. I mean, it's still it's tiny, right? It's still 100 times less, but it should be exactly zero. Unless these don't cancel, no. Hmm. So you think if I'm calculating the electric field right here on the Z axis coming out, it should be symmetric, it should be, it should be fine. Okay, I don't know. I don't know the problem. If you know the problem, give me a comment down below. I obviously can't figure this out, but it's fun. It's still useful to go through troubleshooting techniques, even if I don't find the problem. Um, I think I'm okay with the problem now. Now that I understand where it happens, even though I don't know wh why it happened. So, I'll, I'll, I'll link to the code down below, and, and you have fun at it. I'm sure someone will figure it out pretty quickly. That's it.